All right. So now that we've understood process builders, let's let's understand it uh, a bit better using one more use case, right? So let's go to our COVID count record. Now here, uh, the new use case that we'll be working on is every time the total cases exceeds one lakh, right? Right. If if the total amount exceeds one lakh as a number, the admin should be notified saying please take look take a look at this particular record okay so that he can verify the uh, uh, whether the record is legit or not right so let's build this use case from our process builder right so in this case what we need to do is we need to notify a user you see this bell icon right here this is where you get all your notifications right so we want this particular user who's logged in the system admin user to be notified every time a record has the total cases more than one lakh okay so we'll go to process builder and here do we need to create a new process builder? No, right? We can use the same one and we can just uh, clone it and add our new changes, right? So this is when this same process builder comes in handy. So you see for workflow rules, you'll have to go ahead and create each workflow rule separately. But here you can use the same one and you can just add your node here. Okay. So now if you see, we need to add a third node. I'll just add the third node saying. Our total cases more than one l one lakh right now here what do i need to say the conditions are met what should be my condition the total cases should be greater than or equal to a number that is one lakh right now here this should be the condition that should be evaluated and matched and once this is evaluated to true i want to send a notification to someone right so if you see you can send custom notifications from here okay so we have used update records and now we are using send custom notifications. All right. Using all of this and showing that in an example is an entirely different course altogether, I believe. But yeah, I hope you get the hang of, you know, how to use process builders and what all you can do with it. Right. So let's create and send some custom notifications. So now I'll just give it a name saying notify Himanshu. Right. This is the admin user. And here, if you see, I need to select the notification type. This is a mandatory field, but I don't see any notification type because currently in our system, we don't have any notifications. Okay. So if I have to go to, I have to go to setup and under setup, you see, we can go to notification types. So if I go to setup and here it is automatically open, but you can type in notification types here and you will see that this particular setting is what you need to go to. All right. Custom notifications. And here, you see, you can send custom notifications using process builder. So you need to define one custom notification type here. So I'll just click on new and I'll just say notify admin of the total cases. All right. And I'd want this to be available for both desktop and mobile so that no one is left, uh, you know, uh, uninformed. So this notification type has been created. Now, if I go back to my process builder and I just let's save this and let's try to see if uh, all right, I think I'll have to refresh this so that the notification type comes in the drop down let's go to the covid count and you see currently we need to go to the fourth version which is currently inactive because we did not activate it but it should have our changes so you see the third node is here i'll just go ahead and add action and i'll choose send note custom notification now here now if i go to notification type you see this option is coming up here right so notify admin of the total cases this is the notification type i've selected and here there are three things who should be the recipient, what should be the title and what should be the body, right? So I'll just say the title would be total cases are far too high. And here I'll say, please check the COVID record. And I want to mention what record they need to see, right? So this is a placeholder. Now, at this time you want to show some balanced information, you can use the merge media, right? This merge media nothing but gives you the exact data for which the record is being uh, currently processed under the process builder. So here I just go to name, let's say, and I can just put in this particular field. So you see, this merge field comes in here with a good uh, syntax, and I can just remove this placeholder, and now this will look like, please check the COVID record, which has these many cases, right? So this is another placeholder, I just go ahead and I select the total cases value. So whatever will be the total cases for that record, that will be shown here in this placeholder, all right? So this is how the body would look like and this is how the title would look like. So we are good with the uh, entire information. But now we need to define who, who this needs to be sent to, right? So here you see you can select a user, a public group, an owner or a queue, right? If you go to owner, you can select the record owner, or, you know, whoever created the record and all of it, right? But here we want to specify a specific user, right? So I can just select a user from the record or I can also see the current user. Who would be the current user? This guy right here who is executing things 
or if I want to find a specific user, I can click on find and I can just search users. So, so if I search for integration user, this guy will come up here. If I search for Himanshu, this should also come up. So I'll just select this user right here and let's save it. Right. So our immediate action is saved and now I'll activate it. So before activating it, do you think there's anything wrong with this particular process builder right now? Let's do something. Let's activate it and let's see what, what if, if anything goes wrong. All right. So I'll just click on activate. Now let's go back to our record and refresh this. So now if I just change this particular active cases to let's say 22,000, this will evaluate to something more than 1 lakh, right? Let's click on save. So it's evaluating something more than 1 lakh, right? But I did not. All right, I'm, I'm getting the notification, which means we, we are good to go. But I think there's some issue and I'll uh, talk about it in a while. So if you see this condition uh, satisfied our scenario and we are getting a good notification coming in. Total cases are far too high. Please check the COVID record CC0020. You see how the merge field is working. You are getting the name and you are getting the exact number of cases. Right. The beauty of this is if I just go to, you know, let's say I have just logged in into the system and I see this notification right here. If I just click on it, this takes me to the record. You see, now I can take a look at it. Right. We didn't have to do anything for that. That's that's implicit of uh, the records in the notification section. All right. But now let me just try to do something like Let's go back and here let me just change this to 16900. Alright, and let's click on save. So, right now the total cases is 65, which is less than 1 lakh. Now, let me do something. Let me just update this disease cases to 66800. And this total cases now become more than 1 lakh. But if you see, I did not get the notification. Right. So there's one problem with our process builder and now I'll tell you what what's wrong. So if you see here, the stop button is not letting the next section to be evaluated. Right. See what happened in the first case, the recovered cases were more than deceased. It updated. It went to the next criteria. This was evaluated to fall. So it, re it reached here and it showed you the notification. Right. You are with me right now. Now, the second case was when the deceased cases were more than the recovered cases, which means this evaluated to false, but this evaluated to true. And once this evaluated to true, this action was taken into consideration and this stopped right here, which means your next criteria was not evaluated at all. So which is why you have to go to stop and you have to actually clone this to make the change. Let's click on save. And now I have to just say evaluate the next criteria. Right? This is when your next criteria evaluation comes in handy. And if you have a stop somewhere, that won't process anything that's down below. Right? Now let me activate it. Let's click on confirm. And now let's go back and just change this to just, I'll just increase it with the 100 value. And let's see if this works. So when I click on save, you see the notification is coming now. Right? You're getting the notification. Cool. So this was about process builders. So now we have talked about workflows and process builders and these two are the most important tools that an admin should have in his uh, you know, hand uh, to understand how to you know, declaratively configure things and you know, using point and click you can actually configure a good chunk of background jobs and you know, things that the user need not enter but you can set them uh, from the back end. Right. So I hope you're clear with workflows and process builders. But one one last thing, let's let's look at the differences. Right. It, it's it's mostly asked in the interviews and it's important so that important you have a clear cut idea about, you know, what what are the differences between, between these two uh, tools. So workflows, as you as you already saw, can be multiple for, for the same object. Right. Why? Because you have multiple use cases, multiple entry criteria. So each entry criteria has to be written in a separate workflow. Rule. But process builder, you can have actually all your use cases in a flowchart kind system and you can have one per object right you could create more than one process builder for an object but but you could definitely the ideal scenario would be having one per object right the second one is it supports one business use case right here the workflows but process builders can be helped uh, can be used to handle multiple use cases right because they have a flowchart based evaluation the third one is workflows can just you know send out emails do a field update and send outbound message Right. But if you if you have already seen that the process builders are quite powerful, you can create records, update records, update related records, uh, call custom code, Apex code, you can send notifications, you can send records for approval and all of it. Right. So it's far more powerful. Right. And here in workflows, if you want to update something for a related record that is only limited to the master detail relationships. Right. So if you are working for a COVID count record and you create a workflow rule, you'll only be able to update the contact object nothing else but in process builder that's not the case you can update or create any and every object 
right they could be related or they could be unrelated also the next thing is the only good thing or the only powerful thing compared compared to process builders that's in workflows is outbound messages can be configured only in workflows they cannot be configured in process builders so that's where workflows take a lead right that's the only place where they take a lead so you cannot call apex code from workflows right so apex code is nothing but custom development wherein we you know uh, connect with the server side and uh, write some uh, queries and we uh, do some cred operations so those cannot be you know called from the workflows but you have an option to call that particular code and that can be invoked from process builders using a specific annotation all right so these are all the differences primary differences and process builders being more powerful but it's completely important to you know know both the tools equally and know when to use what right great so this is about the data automation section process automation section let's move on to the next section